Limpopo Health MEC, Dr. Popi Ramatuba, is under fire after a video of her ranting about migrants from Zimbabwe went viral. Well, let's bring you more reaction to that story now. Joined from Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe, we're joined by medical doctor and CEO at Borodale Trauma Hospital, Dr. Vivek Solanki. Dr. Solanki, good evening to you. Thanks for your time. Firstly, your own analysis, having watched probably the multiple videos of this incident that have been recorded and have now gone viral. Thank you. This is a real hell, hot potato, obviously. First and foremost, let me say this, medicine and politics don't go together. It's, medicine is an unthankful job. Our duty is to treat with disregard to money, color, creed, ethnicity. I'm surprised. I'm a medical practitioner for 37 years in this region, in the SADC region, in all the neighboring countries, including South Africa, Zimbabwe, Mozambique, Tanzania, etc. Everywhere people are treated without, we do not ask people, where are you from? We don't ask, what is your ethnicity? We treat them. Many a times in an emergency, we don't even ask what is your name. We save their life. We do not give lectures to them afterwards. We do not politicize anything. There are 8 million foreigners in South Africa. Zambians, Nigerians, Malawians, Congolese, Mozambicans, Somalis, Swahili people, Zimbabweans. Now, what pro pro proportion of that are Zimbabweans? A small proportion. Why are we targeting the Zimbabweans? This land of South Africa also belongs to Zimbabweans. Let us not forget that. Let us get the correct perspective. Most of the Zimbabweans who are here, they speak Zulu. Where did they come from? The Ndebele people, the Matabele people, they left South Africa in 1938. 1838, Mzilikazi had a, a dispute with King Shaka Zulu over some cattle, and he went north. And he crossed the Limpopo and he uh, defeated those people. They, it was through violence he invaded Zimbabwe. And then the Zimbabweans accommodated them. And they lived peacefully as neighbors. Now these same people in time of need are coming to South Africa. It's their country. They speak the same dialect. They have the same culture. They have the same uh, everything. Right? Now, let us not forget that... For decades, our neighboring countries, Zimbabwe especially, Mozambique, Zambia, Tanzania, right? To say the least, accommodated thousands of refugees from South Africa. When I was in school in Zambia and Zimbabwe, quarter of our classrooms were full of South Africans. The children of the refugees, they went to universities with us. They worked with us as doctors. We treated them. Our ex-president, Thabo Mbeki, was a refugee in Zimbabwe, in Harare. He was looked after. His family was looked after. He was given accommodation. Mm -hmm. He was working there. He so, was so, treated So, there. so, so do, Dr. Solanki, um, I'm just going to come in there because I also hear that you're making reference to specific terminologies, and, and those are, are important for the purposes of, of this conversation, right? So let's just go back a little bit. And you talked about how... Everybody who needs emergency care is given that emergency care regardless of where they're from in Zimbabwe. My understanding of what happened in, in South Africa, particularly this incident involving the MEC, is that this wasn't an emergency care patient. This was a patient who was there for elective care. Hello, Dr. Solanki. Dr. Solanki? Yes, I'm here. Yes. So, so, Hello? Yes. Yes. So, so this patient, we understand, was in the country for elective care and not emergency care. And, and I think that hospitals across the world, including the region, make distinctions in as far as that kind of care is concerned. That is correct, but is it right to treat the patient and then put them on national TV 
and give them a lecture. Why didn't you refuse to do the elective surgery in the first place and send the woman back to Zimbabwe, where she would receive treatment? We don't know why she came to Zimbabwe, uh, to, to South Africa for treatment, right? When treatment is available in Zimbabwe. Now, I, I, the treatment I, I, may not be yeah. at the same level. I, I, I think I think that I, I think that the, the South African Health Department agrees in that it has described that incident as having been inappropriate. At the same time, though, it has also highlighted the the the, the issue that was being raised by the NDC, which is around the number of Zimbabweans that don't trust the healthcare system in your country to give them proper care, which is why they opt to come to South Africa. As we all know, Zimbabwe is going through some difficult economic situation. There has been the sanctions on the country from the Western Europe and Americas, Australia and Canada for the past more than 20 years. Now, instead of saying the health sector is bad, we should look at why is the health sector bad? There's an economic downturn, right? So this is when neighbors have to come in and assist, right? We should all be helping each other, right? Let's put aside Western imposed borders, passports with hysterical, disproportionate political bravado. We are brothers and sisters first. We are neighbors first. We are family and friends first before we look at the economics of it. Do, do, we have to do, look at the do, reason do, do, why do, is our neighbor do, suffering. Do, do Should you, I help my neighbor? Do you first? at your own hospital allow patients to travel from other countries to come and see, receive um, free elective care procedures? No, I'm in the private sector. And even then, in the emergency situation, a patient is treated for free, regardless of what their uh, yes, affordability but we've, we've is already, which country they come we've from. We've already agreed right? that it wasn't elective an emergency. Cases, right. Elective cases. Now, she in this hospital, she was not in a private institution. She was in a state hospital in, the, in South Africa, Yes. in the Limpopo province. Yes. Now, in Zimbabwe, we have many Mozambicans, uh, Malawians, Zambians also coming to Zimbabwe, and they receive free treatment in the government hospitals. We do not turn them away because we are doctors first. I will not allow my government to tell me that I cannot treat somebody because of money. We treat them regardless. So, so do, because doctor, we are neighbors. Dr. Solange, we, 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 we know that the patient wasn't turned away, just for purposes of accu accuracy, because it's really key that um, as we have this conversation, we don't distort some of the facts linked to the conversation. And, and I say that not trying to reduce what has happened, because that patient did receive full, full treatment. The bigger issue here is how do we ensure that the issues that are stemming from the political environment in Zimbabwe are adequately dealt with by leadership both in Zimbabwe and in South Africa. And I wonder what you, as a senior medical practitioner in your country, having first-hand experience of some of the consequences of, you know, a, a deteriorating public health care sector, what are the conversations that you are having about this? We're having the same conversation. How do we improve our lot? Where do we fine tune it? Where do we source the funds? How do we manage our patients? Where do we get the drugs from? Who pays for them? Where do they come? How do we bypass sanctions to get some of the medical equipment in? Do you know, I run a private hospital. I need to buy medical equipment. I cannot buy Western medical equipment because of sanctions. I would have to buy it through a third party, through South Africa, through China, through India. But I cannot buy it directly from Germany. I cannot buy it direct from England or America. So we have those challenges. And we are trying to work with our South African brothers and sisters to find a way around to help each other so that a, a more prosperous neighborhood allows for a more peaceful and, and a, a equitable living for all of us. We would not need to come and cross the borders for such cases. So, and in so, also so what, many so cases, what, let's not so forget, what do there's you a lot want, of mischief as well. What, right? what do you want the South African government's response then to be? 
I think South African government should engage Zimbabwean government more in economically helping with infrastructure, helping with projects, so that the Zimbabweans will remain there and work back at home. Nobody wants to go away. And mind you, most Zimbabweans are here in South Africa. They are South Africans. They are Zulus. A lot of them want to come back here where it's their ancestral land. So let us not forget, we have to take it in the correct perspective. Every individual is different. We are, we are uh, generalizing a one case situation to think that five million Zimbabweans are coming to South Africa for treatment. Is it we have other neighboring countries from big poor coming here from Congo, from Lagos, from uh, all over Africa coming yeah. here as well. Look, Dr. Solanke, the, 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 the investment opportunities. The, 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 the difficulty, the difficulty, the difficulty with some of those I, numbers. I, I don't want to use the word xenophobia here, you know. The difficulty with some of those numbers is that even as it stands, we don't have official numbers of how many um, migrants are in South Africa, let alone those who could be here without the proper documentation. So, so I, I hear what you're saying, but I don't know what you're actually basing that on. All right. It looks like we've, we've lost Dr. Solanke on, on the line there, but I think, you know, he's made the point in terms of how he believes um, so the South African government should be responding um, to that, to um, the, the issue of Zimbabweans who need medical care and are coming to South Africa. Of course, we're expecting